Live from Case at 12, the night beat starts right now. A San Antonio home hit by lightning. The family left with only the clothes on their backs. It's a story that inspired San Antonio to step up. It's just, you know, it's heartbreaking. Like they didn't have anything. Nearly a month later, we check in on the effort to get this family back on their feet. And more DPS troopers are in New Valley as students prepare for the first day of class tomorrow. The response to the mass shooting there has some parents, though, asking questions. The DPS workers that are that are going to be there are those the same ones that were at the school that day. Now, the school district says it has that answer and an update on the security measures at its campuses. Plus, a chase in Atascosa County cameras rolling as the suspect tried to get away in a police cruiser. How did he get in it in the first place? How it finally came to an end. But first, we're going to begin with breaking news tonight. Bear County deputies closing down a portion of roadway near Loop 1604 and Highway 181. This is near Calaveras Lake on the southeast side of the county. So deputies are investigating a crash involving a motorcycle and a truck. The impact so intense it threw the rider right onto the ground. We're told that that rider has major injuries and was taken to the hospital, but we still don't know who caused the crash. We're going to keep you updated as more details become available. Now to our big story tonight, more law enforcement, more security, but is it enough to make students and parents feel safe in U Valley? And tomorrow, students are going to return to class more than three months after that mass shooting at Robb Elementary. We know that more than 30 DPS troopers trained for this. They're going to be stationed at every school. In an email, Uvalde CISD told parents that none of those 33 troopers <coughs> are going to be at the schools responded to Robb Elementary on May 24th. Now, the district admits that many of the eight campus buildings aren't going to have all of the pan planned security upgrades by tomorrow. Now, work on secure vestibules has only started at three schools so far, just three. One high school has cameras with work needed at other buildings, and fencing is almost done for two schools. I talked to my son and I told him that they're going to have higher fencing. He said they can just get a ladder and climb over it. So right now he's just not ready. Another parent, Anson Bills, says he's concerned that Flores Elementary doesn't have fencing yet at all. He decided to move his youngest son to online learning for the start of school. Now, good morning. San Antonio is going to be on the road in Uvalde for the first day of classes tomorrow. Meanwhile, schools across San Antonio are going to be wearing maroon in solidarity and support for Uvalde. And our coverage is going to start bright and early tomorrow morning at 430. You know, a teacher who survived that shooting in Uvalde isn't going to be going back to class tomorrow. On May 24th, Elsa Avila locked the door to her classroom, but a bullet pierced her as the gunman walked into another classroom. In an interview with ABC, Avila says that her students took cover and also tried to comfort her. I could hear that they were really frightened. And then the little girls that were next to me would, would move me and would pat me and they would tell me, it's going to be okay, miss. You're going to be okay. We love you. We love you. Mm. Avila used her phone to text for help. The Associated Press reports that she got a response at 1148 saying that help was on the way. And nearly an hour later, at 1233, officers broke a window to her class and evacuated her students. There are still questions surrounding the response at Robb Elementary. KSAT and several other media outlets have filed lawsuits to get more information. And we're going to continue to update our coverage on air and online at KSAT.com. The San Antonio police say a two year old among several people hurt by a shotgun blast this afternoon. Officers were called to an apartment on Petranco Road near Calabria about four o'clock. The two year old hit in the legs. Two women grazed in the head and the arm. Police say they are getting conflicting stories, so it's still not clear who actually fired the shot and what led up to the shooting. Officers executed a search warrant for the apartment, found three dogs inside, but at last check, no gun was found. Now to a night beat update, a lightning strike and fire destroyed their home. And nearly a month later, a San Antonio family says that they're surviving. And that's thanks to the kindness of friends and strangers. The night team's John Paul Baraja shows what the community has done to help that family get back on their feet. 
why me? Why, why do that for me? Like, no, I mean, thank you, but I mean, that's not us. Erica Salceda says the outpouring of support for her family is helping them move forward. Erica, her husband, and their five children lost everything in a fire started by a lightning strike. All of my kids are sleeping on beds and mattresses right now because of people reaching out and donating to us. The Salcedas are staying with family, but they're also receiving donations like household essentials, clothes, supplies for school, and money. All of it made possible through the power of social media, plate sales, and help from one of their favorite boutiques, Marianitas Anogolitos. Through the raffle and then the donation baskets and cash apps, oh, it was... We did collect total, it was about 1200 Fundraisers have brought in nearly $6,000 to the family, not counting cash directly given to them and other gifts. All of it making life a little easier. They're not in their safe place, right? I mean, we've been here for almost seven and a half years. And so just changing that overnight, it's taking an emotional toll on them. And it breaks my heart to see our home more of a house right now. How the South said us plan to make this house their home again within a year, but right now they're just in the demolition phase. Insurance is helping them out, but they say that they haven't received any payments yet. When that does come in, they tell us they'll be using all that money to rebuild. Off Chinkpin and Emory Oak, John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. John Paul, thanks for that update. We certainly hope that things get better for that family. Now, switching gears, you know, we're watching the weather tonight. We saw how rain impacted that family almost a month ago. But, Sarah, when you look at the rain chances this week, they're just not that high. You're right, Stephanie. They really are not. In fact, the best chance for rain that we have over the next few days is, is Wednesday. And even then, it's only a 20% chance for isolated showers and storms. Now, coming up in the forecast, we're going to talk about what low rain chances mean for our temperatures this week. But first, your bus stop forecast for the the day tomorrow. Pretty nice in the morning. 73, not too bad, just a little muggy. And then in the afternoon, it is going to be warm. 93 for the high temperature. 10% chance for a stray shower. But again, that is a very low rain chance. Now coming up in the forecast, I'm sure you've seen them out there. The butterflies are back. I've got your pictures and videos from what is proving to be a bit of a trouble for us and something that we're going to need to take a car wash or two. So I'll be looking at that. And of course, we'll have a look at your forecast coming up. Stephanie. Sarah, you're all about those butterflies today. Thank you. Tomorrow, administrators at Lamar Elementary are going to discuss a plan. Last week, we told you that the school canceled a deal to rent space to a church pastor after concerns over the separation of church and state. Now, the school says it's working on a solution that does not involve a campus-based site, and parents can go to that meeting and share their input tomorrow. Well, I'll take you back to that breaking news we had off the top of the show. We've now learned that the motorcyclist involved in this crash has died. This is near Calaveras Lake on the southeast side of the county. Bear County deputies closing a portion of roadway near Loop 1604 and Highway 181 for what now is a fatal crash. Deputies say a truck and motorcyclist and a, tr a motorcyclist and a truck collided, throwing the rider to the ground. No word on who caused the crash. Of course, we'll keep you updated as more details become available. It's still ahead on the night beat. One pharmacy says they've already have a shipment of the new COVID boosters. How you can find out where they're located coming up. Also, it's been a little over six months since the war in Ukraine began. The progress the president there says that they're making in an exclusive interview. And a man slips his handcuffs off, then takes off in a cruiser. Witnesses caught the chaos on camera. What the suspect was doing just moments before ramming into officers in that cruiser. It's next on the night beat. New on the night beat video capturing the moments a man led police on a chase in Atascosa County. Investigators say the suspect behind the wheel admitted to being on meth at the time. Police say after ramming into one police cruiser, he was arrested and placed in the back of another one. He managed to slip out of his handcuffs and jump into yet another patrol unit and drive away. Other officers followed. He eventually crashed into yet another police unit. He was tased, then placed in handcuffs a second time. And take a look at the man who was arrested. This is 47-year-old Reynaldo Ruiz. 
According to an affidavit, he admitted to trying to hit as many officers as possible. All the officers that were hurt are expected to be fine. Police from Poteet, Pleasanton, the Atascosa County Sheriff's Office and the Texas Rangers are all investigating. Meadow, an update on the war in Ukraine. It's been a little more than six months since Russia invaded the neighboring country. And now Ukraine's president says that his troops have taken back some of their land and they're even preparing to launch more attacks. ABC's M. Wynn has the latest. Tonight, Ukraine launching a wider counterattack against Russia. President Volodymyr Zelensky saying his forces have retaken three settlements, two in Ukraine's south and one in a separatist eastern region. In an exclusive interview with ABC's David Muir, Zelensky withheld military specifics, saying he wanted to preserve the element of surprise. I think that uh, uh, information silence is important after rapes, after tortures, after murders, after we discovered a lot of uh, dead bodies with cut limbs. It's not a war. It's pure and clear terrorism. We cannot have any dialogue with the terrorists. Zelensky also accusing Russia of targeting Europe's largest nuclear power plant again. In his nightly address, he says Russia's recent shelling caused a fire at the Zaporizhia site that forced plant managers to disconnect a backup power line, providing power to cool the reactors. Zelensky telling Muir he believes Russia is using the plant as a weapon. The biggest in the Europe. It means six Chernobyls. It means the biggest danger in the world. So they occupied it. So that is, means that they used nuclear weapon. That is nuclear weapon. The two countries have blamed each other for the attacks around the plant, sparking international concern for a nuclear disaster. A team of inspectors visited the plant and are expected to brief the UN Security Council Tuesday. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. Now an update on those updated booster shots. HEB says some of their stores have received shipments already. The best way to check is on their website, vaccine.heb.com. CVS and Walgreens have similar online scheduling tools. The CDC says they allocated 200,000 doses for these large retail pharmacies in Texas. About 900,000 more are expected for health care providers. The boosters are meant to better protect against the newer Omicron strains of COVID-19. And another shot to keep in mind, the flu shot. University Health and Bear County teaming up to offer free drive-through shots in September and October. The events are open to anyone six months and older. The next one happens Saturday. Just be sure to register online. We have the link and the full list of dates right now on ksat.com. All right, now we're going to take a live look outside. 79 degrees right now, pretty nice evening. But you know what I don't see on that camera? Butterflies. And I've seen a few on there like earlier today. And when I was on my dinner break, guys, I ran into so many of those butterflies. My like wind, literally ran into like them? Like literally yeah, did. My windshield yeah, I've did, done that too. Yeah. did not stand a chance, unfortunately. But take a look at this video sent in through our KSAT Connect feature on our weather app. You can send in videos too. Please do so. It's on our weather app. But again, this is what it looks like out there right now for, for many folks. And people have been asking me, uh, about this. So these are the American snout butterflies. They kind of honestly look like moths. They're not really pretty, are they? Uh, but they uh, live for about in adulthood for about 14 to 15 days and any time from the end of August through the end of September annually, they move through San Antonio working their way south. They host on hackberry trees. And so that's where they're they're going right now. But here's the thing. You may need a car wash. You've got the green light. You're good to go as far as the car wash is concerned. The one thing that I'll caution you about is on Wednesday, there's about a 20% chance for an isolated downpour. Today, we got up to 91 degrees, two degrees shy of the record, but the all time hottest temperature ever recorded in San Antonio happened on this date 22 years ago in 2000 when we got up to 111 degrees. We were 20 degrees cooler than that today and it was still pretty warm outside 91 in hondo it was 94 in new Braunfels, 88 in gonzalez 88 in pleasanton 86 in uvalde 90 in kerrville you know there were times today with the breeze was just right it felt pretty good outside definitely felt like the unofficial end to summer out there and as we take a look at the satellite radar across the state of texas it's pretty quiet right now unfortunately a good portion of the northeast is dealing with flooding there's an elongated trough of low pressure uh, the center of a low pressure 
pressure system is just right over Tar Texarkana. That's going to be hanging out and, and sending around pieces of energy throughout the week. That's why we only have a chance for isolated rain. There's really no big rainmakers in our forecast. Instead, this big high pressure system is going to be compressing the air and keeping out widespread rain. It's also the same high pressure system that's bringing extreme heat to the western portion of the United States. 98 for the high temperature tomorrow in Denver. It's going to be hotter in Denver than it is in San Antonio tomorrow. 113 in Death Valley because of that heat high. Now, as we look at the future cast again, right around that low uh, on Wednesday, that's when we're going to see pieces of energy move through Texas. But coverage is only going to be about 20% when it comes to rain. So no good rainmakers in our forecast over the next uh, few days. Tomorrow, not an exception to that. You'll wake up at 74 degrees, 86 around lunch hour, 93 for the high temperature. Yeah, a, a stray blip on the radar could be possible, but coverage should only be about 10%. It's mainly going to be a mostly sunny day with light and variable winds. Take a look at how nice it's going to feel across the hill country tomorrow. In the 60s, 68 in Bernie, 68 in Comfort. Just a little bit warmer south of that around San Antonio. And then high temperatures today should be uh, on the warmer side. It'll be 95 in New Braunfels, 94 in Seguin, 93 in Floresville, 94 in Castroville, 93 in Hondo. Again, a fairly quiet forecast over the next several days for us. Temperatures will be a little bit warmer than average, but still, at least we're not dealing with a triple digit streak like we were a couple of years ago in September. So thank goodness for Amen. that. Amen. Yeah. Thank you. All right, Jerry Jones said the Cowboys will not sign an offensive lineman. But, but what did the Cowboys do? In his weak defense, he is just on the practice squad <laughs> for now. <laughs> but this guy once actually called the Cowboys arrogant. Now what does he have to say yeah, that he's getting a paycheck from the Dallas Cowboys? When we come back, you'll hear from the newest member of the team. Plus, the Texas Longhorns facing an epic challenge this week coming up. Weird to be putting the, these colors on after playing against them. So, uh, yeah, a little bit. You know, like I said, that was our rivalry. You know, you know the Dallas and uh, Eagle rivalry go deep. So it's kind of weird, but I'm, I'm here you know, in, my, in my home state and ready to roll. There you go. That's right. He's from Texas, former Philadelphia Eagle Jason Peters goes from foe to friend after signing with the Dallas Cowboys today. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. With the kick of their 2022 season now just six days away, the Dallas Cowboys have signed veteran offensive tackle Jason Peters. After passing his physical, the 40-year-old was placed on the practice squad as support for the offensive line that was decimated by the injury to eight-time Pro Bowler Tyron Smith, who suffered a torn hamstring off the bone that required surgery, while rookie Tyler Smith is expected to start. Peters is there if they need him, though he has called the Cowboys arrogant in the past when he was with the Eagles for 11 seasons. I don't, I don't really call it arrogance. I mean, they had swagger, you know, pretty much the same thing. You know, the swagger, you know, they go in uh, week in and week out with that swagger. You can tell how the defense play, you know, Dak and, and, and Zeke, you know, scoring and everybody showing their emotions on their, on their shoulders. And, uh, I mean, I like that, to be honest. You know, that's how we did it in Philly, and that's how we're going to do it here. That's quite the audible. It's also game week for the Houston Texans. They prepare to host the Colts at noon in NRG Stadium. That's after their unbelievable support of the Uvalde football team in their first home game this past weekend following the mass shootings at Robb Elementary School. Owners Cal and Hannah McNair, along with head coach Lovey Smith, players and cheerleaders made the trip to Uvalde to donate all new Nike uniforms and equipment since their director of sports medicine, Roland Ramirez, attended Robb Elementary. Texans also announcing they are treating the entire team to their season opener on Sunday. What was the visit like for Coach Smith? A lot of emotion uh, starting off. Um, we all know what that community has gone through. So football sometimes can bring a smile to people's faces. But um, we know it's a lot bigger than that. And um, the healing process is, is, takes a while. But um, I know it, it touched us. And, and uh, it don't hurt to uh, win a game, too, in that fashion, the way that they did. So we're excited about them coming up this week. And any type of support we can give, our organization can, do, can give, of course, we'll do. 
The Texas Longhorn hosts the number one ranked Alabama Crimson Tide this Saturday in Austin. The Horns will be 20 and a half point underdogs as after Texas beat Louisiana Monroe 52 to 10 in Quinn Hewer's debut as a starting quarterback throwing for 225 yards and two touchdowns while the Crimson Tide kicked off their season with a 55 to nothing rout of Utah State. The last time these two teams met was 2010 for the BCS championship for the 2009 season where Texas lost 37 to 21 after Colt McCoy could not play in the second half. Remember UT head coach Steve Sarkeesian with Nick Saban's offensive coordinator 2019 to 2020 for taking the job in Austin. What's Sark's message heading into this matchup? We need to focus on the game plan as we start working into that um, so that we can go again, go play our style, our brand of football. We, we can't get enamored with Alabama. We have to be enamored with us and what we need to do to play effective football next Saturday. He's already saying, you know, we've got to hit him in the mouth and, and I worry about nothing else. Just hit him in the mouth and, and you know, going there, you know, with the mindset of, of dominance and, and, you know, I'm listening to him because that's right. That's true. And, you know, I, I can't wait to be a part of, you know, this game next week and to see, you know, what we can do when we play. All right, kickoff in Austin on Saturday morning is at 11 a.m. The big game and a big game coverage coming up next. The big game and a big game coverage features a battle between two of the top five teams in 12's top 12. The number two Brennan Bears against the number five Harlan Hawks. The Hawks are coming out their second straight win to kick out their 2022 season after their 45-7 route of Laredo Alexander. In fact, the Hawks have only given up 14 points in their first two games of the year while scoring a total of 78. Now they kick off district play in 29-6A against the Bears, who are also coming off a 42-6 victory against Brandeis after that epic showdown in the Alamo Dome against Steele, where they fell 35-34 in the KSAT Pigskin classic 2022 it's always great to start off you know rivalry teams or teams that are really good like you know, our next two games are Harlan and Taft playing those two teams that our district starting are going to be really good for us to play everybody else in our district and carry that momentum into the playoffs we're down the street we know some kids like we grew up with kids that play with Harlan so obviously there's going to be uh, that rivalry Brandon you know one of the best in the city Last year, we didn't really have any answers for them, but this year it's going to be different because we, we prepared. We're preparing real hard for them. It's a big game. Everybody's saying it kind of determines the district championship. So it, it feels good. You know, we, we feel good defensively, offensively. We got some weapons. All right, kickoff Friday night at Gustafson Stadium between the Hawks and the Bears will be at 7 p.m. I will actually miss this Friday night at big game coverage here in town because I'll be in Springfield, Massachusetts for the induction of Manu Ginobili in the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame. The actual induction ceremony is on Saturday, but he has some duties he has to perform on Friday. We'll be there to cover and that as well. You'll be there. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Greg. Got it. You, and we'll be right back after this. Ooh, we want to let you know about this. We're getting a new member here on our team. Melissa Cole is making her move from the Rio Grande Valley. As you see her on air, we're also going to have an article to help you get to know her. She shares photos of her travels, her pet dog, and her experience with Spanish language media. And it's all online for you at ksat.com. All right, I want you to meet Ida Shannon. She's from Minnesota. You might describe her as adventurous. Able to go zip lining for a previous birthday, set her sights on skydiving next. So her friends from church gave her that gift, <laughs> the gift you're looking at for her 91st birthday. Way to go. Ida was all smiles, flying sky high, then parachuting down to earth. Welcomed with a round of applause when she landed. Very well deserved. I don't know if I would do that, but good for her. I wouldn't not do that. You would not do Especially that? Especially not when I'm 91. <laughs> well, listen, she's, she seems pretty uh, lively, so. I declare she's adventurous. Wow. There you go. Like Pulled it. Pulled a Steve Spree Street. <laughs> yeah, yes, like Waking it. up in the morning at 74 degrees, 93 for the high temperature, only a stray blip on the radar in the afternoon. As for the rest of the week, 20% chance for isolated rain on Wednesday, but generally it's going to be a dry and toasty week with highs in the mid-90s. Just a little bit warmer than seasonably average. Not too bad. Instead dry of I declare, I'd call her I to dare. I to dare. With all the there stuff she does. Wow. <laughs> Good night. Good morning. San Antonio starts at 430.